way, way, way back millions and millions of years ago, this planet was used um, to drop off people as who were undisciplined, who, people who were greedy, people who were um, unwilling to cooperate with others. So they would be dropped off here and would return them to very primitive status. And they devolved and some of the um, rhesus monkeys are some of those descendants of those people. And, and they just became more animal-like than human. They were humanoid, um, but they, over, you know, 10, 20 million years, they devolved seriously, seriously. Chimpanzees, amazing intelligences that just became totally focused on survival in the wild. So those were originally ETs from other places, okay? So then um, some, of the, some of those races that were dropped off had not devolved quite as much. And then, um, and then we had a whole series of uh, comings and goings here um, by various Pleiadians that were intent on taking over and the rule among all the rule when you go to another planet is you do not mix with the the natives you don't Why is that a rule because they're they they're very much um genetic scientists and they are very aware of you know this group might if you start mixing their bloodline their dna with yours you're going to lose intelligence and so that rule existed and then um of course somebody broke the rule and made it with one of the um, descendants of those early uh ets who were dropped off here and she was wild um and so that whole thing um, started the line of what we call humans, earthlings, but they all have that, um, that RH factor in them because that was part of that original line of people. And, and then there's a few people who stayed out of that um, who were on the planet, more than one, more than one or, you know, several groups of ETs, other, I mean, they're, they're, I even hate to call them ETs, other groups of races. That but I think, I think the for, the, for the purpose of this conversation, it's good that you clarify so that we understand that there's evolution of like Neanderthals or whatever that was, and then there's an yeah. exterior race. So otherwise we get confused. Are you talking about other races? Here we think about, you know, um, yeah. Indians being another race. You know, to a certain yeah. it's, it's a good way for... For us to understand what you're talking about, but could right. you also talk a little bit in there about about the Adam and Eve line? Where does that come from? Um, that was a hybrid line that was a mating between a group of Pleiadians and some of the descendants of the people who have been dropped off here as criminals, as people who were not welcome anywhere else because of their refusal to discipline themselves, their, their attitude of, of non-cooperation, um, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes they were greedy um, and, you know, various reasons. Sometimes they did harm to others. That's unacceptable. Um, and, and it's really, so there's been millions of years of, devolution of those earliest beings who who were dropped off here um, but they were still humanoid um, and they they developed certain characteristics that are um, how would I say very animal like so so the Adam and Eve line started with um, the first male who was this hybrid child and then um, between one of the Pleiadians and one of the wild ones here, one of the, what they call the primitives, they're the savages here. Um, and 
and so then I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, that same guy who made it with that um, the female who was a descendant of some of the savages found another one and mated with another one. And so, and they produced a female. And then later um, in, because he got caught um, mating and mixing blood, um, he, he basically um, said, you know, if you two want to go at it, if the Adama, the earthling, um, the male earthling was allowed to mate with the female hybrid and that started our line. Okay. So uh, we were pretty wild, pretty savage, pretty, um, you know, pretty undeveloped way back then. We still are in many ways, but, um, but that line, uh, we descended from that line and we were kept separate um, very in a way that's very similar to the way the Jews were treated or the gypsies were treated or the African races were treated. Um, you know, we get that isolation of certain groups, honestly, from the very beginnings when um, those hybrid humans were not allowed to mate with anybody else, only each other. Um, and that that's where everybody who's from that line has an RH factor um, because that was part of their bloodline. There's yeah. not that many people who have RH factor now, I think it's not, or is it the one that's common? I'm sorry, I'm a little bit confused. Yeah, the RH factor is common. It's RH negative that's that right. is not common. Okay. And that means that you did not come from that line. So, um, so that, you know, that, but I, I, I do know that there have been other races here and there are other lines that are identifiers for those other races. But since we don't know about those other races, have never been taught about those, um, when those parts of the bloodline show up, we say, oh, you know, that's, that's part of the, um, that's the O bloodline or the A bloodline or the AB or the B, um, et cetera. So those are all pieces of other races or evidence of other races um, that have mixed and matched, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the, the, some of the big uh, flood tragedies that happened were, um, there was some hope that the, um, that the humans would be wiped out because they were such an unruly bunch, um, but we were not wiped out. Um, and here we are, and we're still unruly, and we have to develop some self-discipline if we want to join the other races of beings around the cosmos who are committed to life and to um, a spirit of truth and goodness cooperation, compassion, all of those things. Can you describe why you say unruly? What does that mean? Uncivilized? Like what, what does unruly mean? Unruly means unwilling to cooperate with others. There's a heritage here of, of, uh, that we, that's been going for a good 40,000 years. Okay, and the heritage is, comes from a group of Pleiadians who um, have come here to try to take over a number of times. And, um, and that group, the big argument, the, the big difference between, you know, you'll hear people talk about the ETs, oh, they're absolutely peaceful, they're absolutely benign, they're loving, they're this, they're that. Yes, they are, and we carry a big stick at the same time. And nobody messes with us because the technology that we have just erases people, period. So that, um, that willingness to carry the weapons and to be absolutely 100% committed to love and to life and to a spirit of helpfulness and, and goodness and nurturing and cooperation, et cetera, 
when we talk about the Pleiadians, we're not necessarily talking about somebody coming from the Pleiades. We're talking about a, an agreement, the Pleiadian alliance, um, which is a whole bunch of people from all over the cosmos, a, a couple hundred um, different constellations that are all committed to this Pleiadian spirit of goodness and life and love. So, however, there are still others out there that are into um, power, they're into control, they're lazy. They want others to do the work and for them to sit back and give orders. Just do what I say. They are greedy in that they want to control everything and everybody. They want luxury, they, but more than anything, they want to be worshipped. So they project this image of the gods, or I'm a god, etc. And they also have weapons. Um, and that struggle to keep those people who are all about destruction, control, um, taking over resources, uh, irregardless of what the civilization on a given planet uh, is about and how many there are, they don't care. They just want all the resources and they want to control that area. Well, there's a the fight, if you will, is the fight to keep them out of this part of the galaxy. And so so the the belief, which is very strong um, in many people who are who recognize they have some deep connection to the Pleiadians, they're recognizing that that commitment to life is there and that commitment to stand against the greed and the colonization and takeover efforts that result in destruction of life, all they stand against that. And that's where the uh, misunderstanding is. Um, you know, we're, we're not talking about, uh, let me say it this way, o other races of humanoids are other forms of human and they have all the same issues that we have. Could you clarify just a little bit more that, for example, I heard recently that, um, I don't know if it's recently, but apparently that even uh, um, invading races such as the, Anun not the Anunnaki, the reptilians, reptilians are also from the Pleiadians. Some people have yes. said that as well. And that so it creates a lot of confusion to say, uh, then there's a Pleiadian alliance that includes a lot of different races, including Pleiadians. And then there's uh, from where you're from. So in other words, the word Pleiadian doesn't necessarily mean a very peace loving race, perhaps at its roots. Right. Um, but that's not what it means. It means the Pleiadian thing is an, is an agreement. It's an alliance. And it's been in effect for quite a number of years, a couple thousand years. Um, well, there's different levels of the agreement is evolving. We'll put it that way. Um, so the, the agreement between all the different um, races of beings in this area, in this sector of the cosmos is an agreement for peace. And that's called the Pleiadian Alliance. Sometimes it's just called the Alliance. Um, but they, they um, take a stand against those people who were originally part of the Pleiadian group who broke away and said, now nah, we want control of this. We're taking over. So there are renegade Pleiadians that are not necessarily yes. with the peace. Of, so I just want to make that clear. And then there there's, are. There are. And then, but from where you're from, when you say you're from the Pleiadians, what does that mean? Is it a specific community? Is it um, like a, an older, a more evolved race? Or is it some, is it, is there even an older Pleiadian community? Like how, if we were to understand what is the origins of, of your story, could you say a few words on that? Um, maybe a little bit. Um, you know, I don't want to focus too much on me because I think the bigger issues are do we understand our own history? But um, the, but the I, history, I just want to mention that the history of the Pleiadians very much influenced Earth, and yes. they influence the 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 folklore right now of the New Age. They have a big influence 
on Pleiadians. Yes. So I think it's it's a right. good to, it's a good idea to to clarify who they right. are and the different because I don't hear a lot of people talking about that about the different races of yeah. Pleiadians. Okay, so the Pleiadians are the ones who dropped off their criminals here. <laughs> Okay, so they feel kind of bad that things have turned out the way that they have. However, um, their their commitment to this um, to the evolution of the humans on this planet is a hundred and ten percent. It's you know it's unshakable. It's unwaverable. Only if we poop out and say, no, nope, we want to go with reptilians, will the Pleiadian Alliance back away and say, okay, those guys are lost. Um, and the reptilians so, are the ones that are currently trying to colonize the earth. That is correct. And they are in cahoots with the Fourth Reich, the, or what is attempting to be made into the Fourth Reich. There's something else you just mentioned just now that the Pleiadians of, I don't know how many millions thousands years ago that they dropped one you know group of them dropped their millions. Uh, criminal. okay millions of years ago dropped their criminals was it because it was at a time because we had this conversation before about frequency and you said where i come from we don't you know we don't kill we don't um uh, uh try to we just erase the frequency and then we, well, we used to well ah. we used to be involved in all kinds of stuff um that i would call not very peaceful okay so the so the pleiadian alliance is making an attempt to create a peaceful sector in the cosmos and there are various races that work together at that and i happen to be a hybrid myself before i even got here <laughs> of the um of a group that is part pure pleiadian and part another group okay you yeah. hear often people say that the Pleiadians did this the Pleiadians um tweaked us and they made mistakes and they're trying to repay or repay humanity for the mistakes they've done other people say ah oh, the Pleiadians are um, evil and trying to take us over other people say no they're one of the most evolved races and so you know from your people who you where you come from but could you share a little bit overall that history is there some Pleiadians that are evolved and some that are not? And um, are the Pleiadians just a, a system with many community, not communities, because quite a lot of communities, but many mm -hmm. civilizations um, of different interests? Or how does it work a little bit? What can you tell us? Um, so um, let's see, what would be the most relevant? Um, so yes, there are many different levels of evolvement among the various groups that make up the Pleiadian confederation of uh, races, okay? It's called the Pleiadian Alliance. So, um, so I, I'm going to talk just a little bit about my homeland, okay? So I don't want to say a whole lot, but um, we are based on a set of harmonics that is very interested in sound and use sound to create with. Um, and that involves that appreciation of sound. I think I may have said before, um, if it doesn't sound beautiful, it's not beautiful. Um, period. It, our criteria for beauty is how does it sound? Because it can look um, a certain way, but it, we hear how it sounds. There's a huge attunement to the frequencies and the sound of the frequencies. Um, a couple times here in this life, I have heard my own sound. It's, it was mind-blowingly beautiful. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not bragging. Um, by Pleiadian standards, I would be considered beautiful, okay? <laughs> Just because of my sound. Um, other, I've heard a few other people's sounds, um, very musical. The, you, you, so how do, um, cross-modal perception, 
is something that the Pleiadians do very easily. And that cross-modal perception is you hear a vision, you see a sound, you smell um, a sound, you taste a sound, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, you're using another mode of sensory perception than your usual ones. Here we see something, we say, oh, it's pink or it's green or it's blue or it's black or it's brown or whatever, or it's square or it's round. Um, we're describing its physical attributes. The Pleiadians are very, very interested in the sound coming off of or from that set of frequencies. So um, we have houses, we have family, we have um, transportation. Um, we do eat, but not the way we eat here. Um, and and the and we do live much longer, much longer. Um, we have some of that comes from the technology. Some of that comes from the ge genetics. A lot of it comes from the deliberate engineering of the environment so that there is no takedown of your frequencies. Um, and so that's very, very important to us. The environment is absolutely critical. Air is pristine where I come from. Um, plants are extraordinarily healthy. Uh, we do not really have animals in the sense that other people, in the sense that we have animals here. Um, but there are some birds and things like that. Um, we have amazing technology. And when I say that we are extraordinary geneticists, um, yes, we are. Um, and that is for us as simple as, how do I say, putting together a cake here. Um, um, for an earthling to put together a cake, um, you know, you just mix the flour, the sugar, the salt, the flavoring, and the, the butter, the eggs, and the liquid. Um, for Pleiadians, we put life together the way we do here, put a cake together. And that comes from sup superior understanding of frequencies. Um, so the goal if you will, of the Pleiadian people is the, is um, we're, how do I say it? Um, the, the goal is to help others to evolve. Okay, that's, that's our goal. <laughs> um, at the same time, it's to evolve ourselves further. And the ideal is this, perfect balance between a physical three-dimensional being, actually it's more than three dimensions, but I'll say a three-dimensional being and, um, and the frequency set that makes up that being. And that is, um, how do I say it? That is absolutely based in love and light and, um, and wisdom and grace and compassion and, and the ability to change state. So you can go from being three-dimensional to being nothing but light. Um, and you can stop anywhere in between, <laughs> if I could say it that way. When you get to the point that you understand frequencies, you understand how to put them together. You understand how to remove one frequency from a set without destroying the whole thing. Um, you have access to extraordinary technologies. And, and so the, uh, one of the things that I hear a lot here on the planet is that there's... Um, uh, we need to go back to a simpler way of life. Um, 
I'm going to say that's a nice idea, but that typically for most people involves becoming more primitive, um, less sophisticated, less technological. And what I'm going to say is no, just the opposite. You want technology to serve you and you want to be able to use that technology um, to, um, oh, I know what I was going to say a minute ago. You want to be able to use that technology to move the three-dimensional being into the fourth dimension. When you get to the fourth dimension, you control how long you last. The fourth dimension is how long does that set last? It's, it's time. So, and once you have conquered the fourth dimension and you can last long enough to gain a little more wisdom, you can figure out some more um, science and some more technology and can evolve your entire civilization in an extraordinary way. Extraordinary. The people have to come together and all have to be willing to support uh, or nurture or develop a particular kind of technology um, in order to get there. It can't be a single, um, like a mad scientist in his, you know, in his laboratory. Um, it doesn't work that way. You need thousands of people to develop the kind of technology that we have. And those people have to be of one mind and one heart. Okay, that's so, um, so that's, I think, a worthy goal. The, the pollution or the destruction comes when you evolve the technology without the spirit of the one-mindedness or the one-heartedness. And that's, um, it, the technology will take you out. Somebody's going to get a hold of that, that doesn't have the right attitude or the right goals or the right intentions. They don't have the right alignment. And they start a war and everybody loses. And you start over. And we have started over enough. It's time to take a step that where we work together and where we can actually evolve ourselves, our technology, our cities, our uh, education, our everything, our medicine, the way that we see the cosmos and our place in it. To identify, um, when we're talking about the good Pleiadians, so to speak, the people who actually have our best, best interest at heart, do you actually call yourself Pleiadians where you're from? Is that what you, you call yourselves or do you have a name um, from your planet? Because we look at the, the star systems and we gave it names at some point, right? But that's right. not necessarily what the people in that star system will call themselves. So, um, you would say, let's say, um, um, you are from uh, Alpha Centauri um, of the Pleiadian Alliance. So you maintain your history <clears throat> and your your identity as a group. But you also let people know what your alignment is right off the bat. Right. So the, the word Pleiadian amongst all the uh, evolved races or the, I'll say ET races, so we understand they're not necessarily from Earth. The Pleiadian Alliance is what they're, they call themselves as well. It's the same name. Yeah, right. So to, you'll hear the Pleiadians and, and those Pleiadians. And we think it was, you know, done by the Pleiadians. Um, that's a group of, of like hundreds of races of beings. There are the specific people from the Pleiades. Um, they are also Pleiadian. And, um, but they are working with another group that is, um, has mastered this technique of being able to be highly, highly spiritual and highly, highly physical. And that's our goal. That's what they want for us since we are just now evolving from or, or beyond 3D, beyond physical flesh, um, to become beings of light 
um, and high level spirit, that's, that's the goal to be able to be highly, highly spiritual, meaning having the spirit of love, the spirit of life, the spirit of cooperation, the spirit of goodness, the spirit of helpfulness is unshakable in, in those people. Okay. Yeah. That clarifies quite a bit. There's something that I'd like you just to be, um, indulge me because a lot of us, the idea of a history of millions of years is not something that most of us have been taught. Um, right. And yeah. so when you talk about, uh, yeah, 10 million years ago, I don't know how many million years ago it was, but 10 million years ago, the Pleiadians dropped off their criminals or their unwanted ones. And then, you know, and then a lot of story has evolved since then. Yeah. I mean, in people's mind, when they hear uh, people in the UFO movement say, yeah, the Pleiadians did um, a mistake and now they're trying to fix it. That was might have been 10 million years ago, right? That right. something might have happened. So um, I think that for a lot of people, the history of the planet, um, we still have a lot to learn. Like, oh, gosh, it's a very big and long history. And when you yeah. hear, I hear a lot of different people talking about yeah the you know the president uh, the, the previous president T um, had made a deal with these Pleiadians and then this with these this and it always seems like they're either good or bad but the idea is that we have a long history here and they could be either good or bad the, that's the Pleiadians. true yeah okay. so I just wanted to bring that because for for you it might be obvious but for many people it's like the Pleiadians are an old race they've been around for a long time yeah. very long yeah. <laughs>